Welcome back to the channel. In this mini series, I'm showing you how I built this high performance porch addition and what I did differently from conventional North American construction. Today's all about the facade, what material I chose and why, and how I installed it. Let's get it going. As I mentioned in the episode on materials, I use two different facade types. The first one you can see right behind me here is a fiber cement board. This one specifically is made by a company called Finex and it's a quarter inch thick. And the main difference to most of the other materials on the market is that this does not use wood in its composition, it uses fiberglass. That matters because wood composite boards are vulnerable and break down faster. The wood in the material absorbs moisture and then swells up and that can lead to premature breakdown of the material. With this board, there's fiberglass in its composition and no wood and that is not affected by the freeze-thaw cycle that we have. One thing that I noticed after I installed this board is that it uh, changes its color when it gets wet, just like concrete. It looks darker. Some people may be bothered by that, but I actually kind of like it how it responds to the environment. Hello. Hello. It can be cut very easily, and I used a track saw to make these straight cuts, and then installed it with stainless steel screws. The strapping behind it is two by twos, which creates an effective rain screen for any moisture to dry out very quickly. Originally, I intended to paint it white with special paint, of course, but over time, the color has actually grown on me and not painting it is just one less thing to fail or maintain. Do you know what else is going to fail? This channel if you don't subscribe. The second material I chose as the facade is this traditional Japanese charring method called Shosugiban. Hey, quick correction about the term Shosugiban. It's not actually correct. Lance, one of the viewers, pointed that out to me and he said that yakisugi is the correct term. So ignore the term shosugiban, that's wrong, yakisugi it is. From shipping windows from Germany over the years, I collected all the wood. The pallets were screwed together so it was actually quite easy to screw them apart. And over the years I just amassed quite a lot of this wood. After ripping it down into two general widths and cutting it into that trapezoidal shape, I used a burner to char it then simply brushed off the char and used boiled linseed oil to preserve the wood. Initially this facade was a lot darker and I didn't quite like it, but then that grew on me what I didn't expect is that over time it actually lightened. I thought carbon being inert wouldn't actually change the color, but as it turns out, it either washed out or lightened by UV. I don't know exactly how that happened. And the, uh, the grain came out a lot more visible. If the siding bleaches further, I may actually end up using some stain from Sanson to darken this again. But I haven't decided yet, and so far I actually like it. One thing that is important to note is that I had to change the strapping behind this material. These Shosugi band boards are roughly three quarter inch thick, so I used the three quarter inch strapping behind it to make sure that they are in line with the fiber cement board, which is only a quarter inch thick. I wanted them to align nicely so that in the sections where they meet, that they would actually be on the same plane. What I find very attractive about this facade is that I use no chemicals to treat it. And so there's nothing that can really wash off into the ground that is dangerous. Also, it's very easy to maintain. I could very easily remove specific boards of this to just do some work behind it or if they need to be replaced. Coming a bit closer to this board, you may actually notice that there's open gaps in here. This is very untypical for residential homes here in Canada. It's very popular in Germany. One of the main concerns is that insects may get into it. The observation has been that behind this facade, there's actually a fairly active wind stream. So when the facade heats up, there's air that can stream up and insects don't really like that. I've used a UV resistant membrane called MyVest 700 SOB, which has a UV resistant black coating to it. 
and that's why these shadow lines are completely dark. Also one thing I just noticed bringing you a bit closer, I found myself trying to hide this, but this is actually just part of nature. And this is wasps that are taking little pieces of wood to make their nests out of. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but that's just how it is. With regard to the insects, I have not noticed any issues so far. I made sure to have insect screen at the bottom. I'm not sure if that was even necessary with it being an open facade. And I also made sure to have insect screen at the top. In Germany, they actually call that insect screen not insect screen, but they call it small animal screen, which is really there to protect mice or anything of that type to enter. And so they cannot enter into it. They also can't make it through these slots. One thing that is very important to note when installing a facade like this is to keep the manufacturer's specifications of the membrane in mind. They have very specific requirements for how big these gaps can be so that there's not too much UV light that can actually hit that membrane. Here's a close-up of the screws. I pre-drilled all these holes for these screws, which are very specific to facades. They're stainless steel, and they have a very interesting thread pattern on them that draws the boards closer to the strapping behind it as you tighten them up. Here's a close-up of the fiber cement board. These screws are stainless steel as well. They're strapping right behind here, and between the strapping and the facade, I put a UV-resistant rubber membrane. This holds the boards in place so that they don't shift. One thing to pay attention to as well is that these screw holes are actually stipulated by the manufacturer as well. And when you install them, the center screws off the board shall be installed tight. This holds the board in place. And over here, ideally, you give it a bit of room so that when the panel expands and contracts, that it is a floating point right here. What if your facade could tell a story? One charred by hand, the other one weathered by the elements. Would you go for that? Or would you do your own twist on it? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. What would you do? The next episode is going to be on air tightness what you do, how I achieved it here, and how you measure it. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So until then...